Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're moving right along on this old 59. We're back on the 59 Coronet and we're, we're detrimming. I'm not gonna bore you guys with all the detrimming on this side because we already did the other side and I showed you all of that. And I don't wanna bore you guys to death. So, if you missed those videos, go back and watch them. Check them out, man. You might be surprised at just how easy this car actually does come apart. I mean, it's it's been it's been a really fun you know, rather pleasant project so far, to be perfectly honest with you. I actually come out here and work on this car to unwind, believe it or not. That's how easy it's been. Now, I know that's usually not the case when you're dealing with a 60-plus-year-old car, but somebody took pretty good care of this one, you know, so it's, we're not dealing with a lot of rust, corrosion, or any of that. I mean, this car is literally just coming apart with ease. No, no issues at all so far. So I thought maybe we'd start off this video trying to get this hood ornament off here. Uh, it looks pretty straightforward. Got a couple of bolts hidden away up inside of here. Let's look. Uh, right there, there's two of them. So those are easy to get to. There's another one actually under this latch. So I'm going to have to pull this latch out of the way. And right under here looks to be a third bolt. And that should be it. But let's find out. All right, so with the latch out of the way, you can see that third hole I was talking about right inside of there. I don't know if the lining's right, but there is a bolt. So let's get that off. The other two I mentioned a minute ago, and that should come right out of there. I made all this pretty easy. I mean, everything's the same size. Oh, there it is. So far, all these have been a 3 8 No, let's see. No, 7 16 all right that's the last one all right this should come right off of here now let's see here it's trying to hang up on the threads a second there we go well there's some more crud yeah been finding a lot of that that stuff traps moisture but no rust or anything under there that's good I think I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the latch, even though we will have to take it back off to put that hood ornament back on. I still would rather it be on the car, you know? I mean, it's still going to serve a purpose. We want the hood to stay latched, even while we're working on it, so. All right, so the latch is back in. Emblem's off. Moving on. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started on all of this, get all of this tore down, all the trim off. And I will check in with you guys in a little while. Go ahead and get this old antenna off of here. Somebody kind of had this all rigged up and yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. So we may, and this was, this was kind of always a thing. So I think a new antenna is definitely something that we need to get a hold of. There we go, get that off of there. All this old crap out of the way. There's some more of that beautiful original paint showing. They didn't even take the antenna off to paint this. They taped around it. All right, that concludes the front fender detrimming. Uh, we got the emblem off. The wheel well trim there goes over the fender well and then that little piece there. I uh, had a little bit of trouble. The clips, they don't want to come undone. Um, there's little 3 8 nuts on the back side of there, so I'm going to have to grab a hold of these somehow without tearing them up and try to spin those nuts off the back side. Uh, shouldn't be too big of an issue, but something that'll have to get done before it gets painted. We can't paint them with those on there. And I don't know how you would ever get the trim back in place without taking those off and actually putting them back into the trim. Oh, drop that piece. Uh, they they kind of slide into that channel, as most of you guys probably already know. So I don't know how I would do that with them on the car. And besides, you know, it's gonna get in the way of me painting anyway. So. I suggest going ahead and going through the trouble of getting those out of there. Uh, of course, we got the antenna. Now, this is going to have to go out through the bottom down here, which means I'm going to have to kind of unbolt my uh, my wheelhouse a little bit to open up a spot for that to slide through. But that's okay. We'll get that. It's not working properly. It's kind of stuck. That's only about like halfway up right there. The rest of it's stuck out of the bottom. It's probably just seized up. So, like I said, we'll probably have to replace that anyway. 
but at least we'll get it out of the way for painting. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the door. Uh, this door, is, they're so easy to take apart, man. There's two bolts, two nuts on the back side, two studs that stick through here, two nuts on the back side. Uh, one little, um, it's just a little bolt on the side here. You access it through that, that little plug. You just pop that out of the hole and it's right inside of there. Super easy. We did that in another video. Go check it out. There's nothing to it, man. Detriming the side of this car is, is very, very easy. All right, so even though I'm not going to make a whole video about tearing down this side of the car since we've already done that on the other side, I thought we could at least kind of take this opportunity to maybe reintroduce myself. Some of you guys are new to the channel. We've gotten a lot of new subscribers to the channel lately. And uh, some of you guys are probably wanting to know what the deal is. What's this channel all about? Is it a flip car channel or are you storing cars? What, what, are, what, are, you, what are you doing here? Well, we're doing all that. Boy, that handle sure comes out easy. Yeah, that's what we do here, man. We just, it's just an all around car channel. I do have a, uh, a dealer's license. I've got my own little car lot and uh, it's very, very small. But we don't just flip cars here. We do work on our own side projects. We got a lot of cool projects going on here and uh, we don't mind sharing them with you guys. We've got everything from little mini trucks that we're working on to uh, classics to old Mopars, you name it. We've got it all here. I mean, hell, the other day we were putting a putting an engine in the old you know 1970 GMC, and now we're over here working on a 59. And you never know what tomorrow. Tomorrow we might be flipping a car. Tomorrow we might be working on a mini truck. You never know. So be sure to tune in. Be sure to uh, hit the old notification bell so that you will be always up to date on what we got going on around here. Because you never know what you're gonna get. I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time and not tear everything up. There we go. There, got it. And also, my kids have channels too. I've got three kids that have uh, their own mini truck projects, their own co-part projects even. And you guys are going to want to check out those channels. For those of you guys that thinks that, you know, that kids aren't getting into this, you know, this next generation, that they don't care about this kind of stuff, uh, maybe they'll restore your faith, you know, because they're in it, man. They're, they're really doing some work over there. Of course, there'll be links in the description for all their channels. You guys want to go check them out. Really cool stuff going on over there. Kind of moving on over to the trunk lid and I'm taking the dodge letters off pretty easy so far. I mean, they come, this is the last one. I mean, they come right off really super easy. Just got the little nut on the back side, screw that off, and I got all the rest of them all right here. So they're all gone now. I'm going to take this off and we're just about done after that. Pretty simple. It's just got those two little access holes right there. I don't know if you can see, but up inside of there, there'll be a couple of couple of nuts that have to get taken off. Really easy to do. And then that'll pop right off of there, and then that's it. All right, well, there's that one. There we go. There's that one. And here's the emblem. Oh, that one's got some crud in it. This is what's hiding behind your emblems. Look at that. Uh. Oh, that's only some of it. Here's the rest. It's pretty bad. Let's see if we can pry the lock cylinder out of here now. Oh yeah, that came out really easy actually. Oh wow, cool. All right, well that was easy. Pop this out of here right quick. There's that. I even managed to save the little rubber gasket, the seal that goes in there. How cool is that? I mean, it's not even weather cracked or tore up or anything. We'll probably reuse it. I don't see why not. So that's official. This is the final piece. 
This is the last of it. We have completely detrimmed this whole car at this point. It's taken me probably about an hour and a half or so to do this. And you know, I'm taking my time, going slow, making sure not to get crazy and bend things and break things. And I mean, check it out. I mean, we're even going as far as to put the screws back where they go, tape them in the hole if need be. To be able to go through and take that much time on it and, and still only have an hour and a half into the entire side of this car. I mean, that was a ton of trim, little ornaments. We did the hood. We did everything, you know, and look, this is how we do it. You know, we see how I put tape on the ends. That's to keep the trim from sliding out of the end of the channel. That way this stuff doesn't rattle around and get lost when we're storing it. This is all the trim off of the, uh, this is the door here. This is all the trim here off of the fender. I'll keep all of this together. We'll do the same thing with the door. You know, all the trim from the door will get bundled together in one bundle and it will get set just inside here. That's just the best way I know to keep track of stuff because I know how it goes, man. These, these projects, you know, you get all these parts you get floating around and then you start losing stuff. And by the time we can put it back together, you're trying to find this stuff. It makes it so difficult to put back together. And I hate that. I just can't stand it. It takes the fun out of it because technically, you know, once you're putting it together, you're on the home stretch. And that's really, that's supposed to be the funnest part of the whole project. You know, why ruin that by being disorganized and not labeling things and just keeping track of things? I just, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to set this piece just inside here since it did just come off of this fin. Uh, here's all the stuff for this entire quarter panel. Every piece that came off the quarter panel is right here. I'm going to bundle that together and we're going to put it just inside right here of that quarter panel. So, and I did the same thing on the other side. I've got everything for that side right there, everything for this side right here, even the front windshield trim. This is everything for the passenger side. So, I've got it sitting on the passenger side and it just makes it a lot easier later when we go to put it back together. All right, so what would I grade this on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the hardest? I would probably say a 4. As far as teardown goes, I would say a 4 so far. And only, I wouldn't even say a 4 if it wasn't for the fact that this front bumper did fight me a little bit. I, I would probably say a 3 if it wasn't for that. But, you know, that was actually my own fault. I was doing it wrong. And you're working on the passenger side. We pretty much got this quarter panel stripped. And we found more rust. We got to get in there and cut that out. I think it'll be pretty easy though. We'll just get in here and kind of trim. Just cut out the battery. We'll come out just past it, of course, and then we'll put a new piece in there. It ought to be relatively easy. I mean, there's no body lines or anything involved. It's just a little curve. Pretty simple. So that'll be easy, not an issue. Uh, after we cut it out, we'll get in there with our rust proofing uh, products and we'll, you know, we'll get in there and treat the whole area inside and then we'll close it back up. Just a little bit of filler around the wheel well here. Not a lot, it was just a skim coat. So we're good to go. We're getting in this channel. We got that all cleaned up really nice. Right here on the inside, we got all that stripped down too. And just like on the other side, we just kind of stopped right there and we'll we'll pick up, get all of that done when we do the, the deck lid. I thought maybe we take this opportunity, go ahead and cut this out and see exactly what we're working with on the inside. Let's test out this old cheap tape, see if it works good for a cut line. All right, we may have uncovered a little hidden treasure. I don't know. Let's see what do we got here? Somebody's glasses. Uh, it's like maybe an old insurance verification card of some sort. Not really sure. Uh, let's see. That's probably one of the the nuts that I dropped pulling the tail light out. Uh, got some more stuff in here. Yeah, this kind of stuff's got to get out of there, man. And it's just gonna keep rusting, you know. I mean, look, there's a whole, a whole rag in there just holding moisture. So that's not good. Let's look up inside of here. I know you guys are looking at that wire, thinking, man, you cut one of the wires. I don't know. Maybe I did. I don't think I did though. I don't see the other end of it anywhere. So that's kind of the first thing I was checking for. I was like, hey, where's the other end of that wire? But there's no, there is no other end of the wire. So. 
guess that's just something else just in there. I don't know. But hey, here's our rust. We're gonna have to get in there and clean that up. Nothing's eaten through or anything, so it's just a matter of cleaning it up and treating it. There's still solid, it's all solid in there. There's no holes inside of here. It's just a lot of surface rust and a lot of crusty crap. Let's get in here and see how much metal we actually have to work with here. Try not to scrape around too much and a lot of you guys don't like that. Here's our seam seal. That's what all that is. In case you guys are looking at that thinking like, oh my God, look how much metal's gone. That's just the old seam seal. Once you get that out of the way, you're good to go. I mean, everything else is solid. You just gotta get all that old seam seal out of there. You gotta get in there, treat that metal, and then put new seam sealer back in when you're done, and it'll be fine. It'll be good as new after that. Check out this big old chunk of seam sealer. I just broke loose, look at that. Get the, see, get all that old crap out of there. Expose the metal underneath. Get it all cleaned up. All of this metal up here, this is solid, man. I mean, it doesn't have nothing inside of it. You can feel inside of here, it feels fine. You can see what the back side of the panel looked like. Let's check that out. That's the piece we just cut out. <laughs> so, hey, y'all, we got some good news. Some of our stuff came in. Check it out. Uh, this is uh, the internal frame coating. And the cool thing about this stuff is it's got this really long, uh, what they call a conical nozzle. That's this thing right here. Uh, it's just a long tube and out, out the end of it, it shoots, it kind of just shoots it all out like that. So uh, there's a picture of it on the, on the package there. And that's exactly what it does up inside of here. So we can get up inside of behind of everything and just shoot that stuff in there. It'll get in there and coat everything really nice. I'm gonna start on the easy side first. And that's gonna be this spot here on the rear windshield, passenger side. It's got a little hole there. Uh, basically all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get in there. I'm gonna work that back to good metal uh, All of this around here is all structurally sound. It's very thick just got a little surface rust on it And that's it. So I'm gonna work that back just a little bit Get it back to the good stuff and then we're just gonna weld it shut and then I could get in behind here From inside the trunk we could open the trunk lid and actually go go in underneath there and access all of that And we are gonna hose it down with this stuff right here Okay, I'm just gonna start off with my die grinder, a little reamer bit on the end here, and we're just gonna kinda of ream that hole out. Get it back to the good metal, like I said just a minute ago. Very simple process. Okay, so after getting in there, cleaning up the metal a little bit, that's the hole that we're left with, not bad. Just a small little hole, but looky here. <laughs> That's pretty bad, y'all. We're going to have to cut that out just the same as the other side. We thought this was going to be the easy side. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Anytime you're dealing with rust, man, what seems to be easy on the surface, it almost never is. So let's go ahead and get that cut out of there. And basically it'll look just like the other side when we're done. Just go right through here. Get all that out. All right, I think that'll get it. Let's see here. And there we are. It's a little crusty in there. That's okay, we could treat all of that. That's totally accessible from underneath and from out here now. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about up inside of the trunk here. There's the hole we just cut right there. And you can see where it's been leaking for years. I mean, look at the top of that. That wheel well there, lots of uh, lots of rust, lots of it's just surface rust though. It's not it's not uh, holes. It's not eaten into at all. And somebody tried to get in here and do something with it. You know, you can see here somebody's got different painted all of this. So they was trying to help it along. Uh, luckily, that bracket that you see just right there, it's all still good. Um, none of it's rusted out. So we'll clean all that up the best we can, blow it all out with the air gun, 
and then we will get our, uh, our, our rust encapsulator and all of that sprayed up inside of there. Once we got our coatings in there, we could jump out here and take care of this little area here and get, get that piece replaced. Well, as much as I'd like to get the camera up in here and show you guys all of this, uh, you'll, it is way too hard to get the camera in there and work at the same time. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and I'll give you guys a little before and after. All right, let's see what we came up with. All right, everything's pretty clean. Um, we just went through with the wire brush like I showed you, some sandpaper, just got in there with whatever we could get in there with. Got all the loose stuff off, because that's what they say, just get the loose stuff off, and then the rest you can just coat it once you've cleaned it, so. Okay, so here's the piece that we cut out, right? Goes in here like so. Here's my new piece. I uh, welded a little stud to it so I can have something to kind of hold on to, obviously. And that's just going to fit right in there like so. That ought to work out pretty good. I got it trimmed up, already ready to go. I'm going to start getting that tacked in. Now, you got to be careful in this area because if you don't, if this doesn't all fit together correctly, your glass isn't going to fit together, fit in the hole properly, and it won't seal properly and all of that. So I want to take our time, make sure we get this part right. If it needs any additional trimming, I'll get in there and do that before I weld. But I think I'm ready to go. Okay, so here's the Eastwood stuff. That's the internal frame coating. Uh, let's see, there is the part number. If you guys want to use some of this stuff. Here's the nozzle I was talking about a second ago. You know, you just put it on here just like any other. Plugs on just like normal. And then uh, the tip here. This is what we'll get in there and kind of spray everything exactly the way we want it to. Check it out, see that? Can you see how that comes out of there? And look how far it sprayed. Look, I'm standing over here and look at this. Way over here, which is every bit of 10, 10 feet away, we got overspray on this fender. I mean, that shot literally all the way across the room over here. That's crazy. All right, so uh, we're gonna get in there and we're gonna coat all that down before I close this area up. Okay, so we're gonna do the best we can try to get a good shot of this for you guys. Basically, you just wanna get the tip of that up in there. There we go, look at that. It does a pretty good job getting in there. You can also take a hanger or something like that, put on the end of this, kind of help making that go up in there a little bit further. Wouldn't mind getting all the way up in this cavity and just going after it here. I think maybe I'm gonna try to just to put the end of the screwdriver on here. If I have to, I'll run in the house and grab me a hanger, but I think that'll get it. Now I can kind of get a little better aim. I can kind of get up in there with this because this thing's like a mile long. All right, let's try it again with our new and improved. I really want to get up in behind all of that, just like so, and then maybe even get off over here. Something like that. And the rest of this out here that we can actually get to, we will just use a regular, you know, spray nozzle. All right, I'm gonna get up in here. Hopefully I can get a half-assed decent shot of what we got going on in here. I basically coated all the way up in that cavity, and that's the tail fin. And then of course you got the bracket there for the, for the uh, package tray and the, the deck lid and all that stuff. That's all coated now. Like I said before, the rest of this we'll get with just a regular spray nozzle. And I want to get a little bit up here too, on top of that bracket. Right here, this is what we're spraying on the bottom side. So now that we're all coated underneath, we'll get a little bit up here. And then we can start capping it off. Uh, this is the tail fit I'm talking about. When we got our spray wand all the way inside of here, so all of this is coated now inside. 
All right, so I've switched to a regular tip here. Let's get in here, get some of this on this area. Just want to treat all of this. And then when we come back and paint it, we'll be able to paint on top of a, a surface that does, doesn't have any more of the surface rust on it. It'll have a treated surface. So this all should be good. Uh, we'll have to obviously work back just a little bit to uh, do our welding, but that'll be okay. We'll let this dry for a minute and then we'll get in there and do that. Oh, uh, you might've noticed, I've already patched my hole. Remember the hole that was there? That's gone. So we'll be welding this shut in no time. All right, I thought maybe we'd run this up in here while we can before we weld it shut. So maybe we can spray some more of this up in there. Take advantage of having this extra little access hole here. See how far that goes up in there. That's pretty cool. So we ought to be good to go there. I mean, look at that. You can actually see it oozing out of the trim hole. <laughs> That's awesome. So we know we got plenty of it up in there. That's what we wanted. I'm gonna go ahead and hit up my patch panel, a little weld through primer. I just been getting this from O'Reilly. There's a part number there if you need some. They recommend you do this before you weld. Um, I hate this stuff personally. To me, it makes it harder to weld. But that's what they say to use, so that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, we have been using it for years. This is what we always used in the body shop. So anyway, I'm just gonna hit up the back side with it and uh, we're gonna get this welded in. I think I'm gonna take my die grinder blade and just run it right through here and kind of open me up a nice little gap for my weld to go. That's a little bit too tight of a fit. I think that'll work. All right, I think that's gonna work perfectly. We'll tack and then move on down and tack. And if we have to, we'll open it up some more, but I think that's gonna get it. All right, so the patch panel is in place. I'm just kind of skipping around, welding it here and there, and eventually it'll all get filled up and we'll grind it down and she'll look nice and pretty and we can move on to another spot. All right, so this is what I came up with. Check it out. We got a rust-free patch. And the cool part is, is you don't see any of that. I mean, it's got a piece of trim that comes out like right through here all the way around, so I mean, Really, we wouldn't even have to do any filler work there at all if we didn't want to. We will, though. We'll dress it up. We'll make it look nice, even though you won't even see it. The main thing is, is making sure that we get our welds worked down so that the glass will fit, fit back the way it's supposed to, because that would be a nightmare to uh, get everything all painted and then go to put the glass in and find out, oh, man, we should have worked this area down a little more or whatever. So that's the main thing in that area. So we could call that one done. I will probably get back inside of the uh, trunk 
back up underneath there and make sure none of our coatings burned away or anything like that maybe we'll give it another pass with the uh with our uh eastwood stuff here and our wand we'll get that all up in there we'll give it one final coating uh that'll be like three three coatings all together up inside of there and like i said we've got it oozing out of the trim holes at this point so it ought to be good you guys are probably wondering what this is about. Uh, I use that to hold my camera. <laughs> a little tiki torch. I throw my camera in the end of it here and I can shine down on what I'm working on. Works really well. And uh, I don't have to buy all those fancy tripods and all that. Nothing fancy going on around here, I'll tell you that much. All right, so I went in there, gave it another coat, just like I said it would. And we've got, we've got it oozing up out of these trim holes now. So we're, we are very well covered inside of there. I'm gonna call it good. I wanted to show you guys this right here. This is the trim that goes on the bottom of the um, on the bottom of that windshield. And let me get this lined up here. All right, so there it is lined up with the clips, and you can see that it comes out past the spot we just fixed. So everything we just fixed, you don't even see. So I think we went above and beyond, considering that you don't even see it. Uh, we will we'll go in there. We'll get it all smoothed up, just like we normally would. That's gonna to have to be on another video, you guys. Uh, we're gonna take advantage of the weather. We've got some really bad weather come through and it's gonna be like this for a few days. It's way too cold to be in here doing any kind of priming or body work or anything. So I think what I'll do is I'll take advantage of that, get in here, do all the welding, get everything welded up, all this rust repair, let's get it over with. Uh, I will definitely take you guys along on all of that. Don't worry about that. Uh, I wanna get down in here and uh, fix these rocker panels and uh, down here, the, the bottom of the quarter panels, that's gonna be where we go next after we finish the bottom of the windshield. For those of you guys just joining us, might be new to the channel, uh, we gotta go through the whole process all over again, over on the other side, pretty much the exact same thing. Usually when it involves doing the same process all over again, just on the opposite side, I don't really bore you guys with all of that, but I will take you guys through the process of fixing the bottom of these quarter panels. As you guys saw, we got, we got plenty to do down there. You might've noticed that we haven't stripped these three panels yet or the hood or the deck lid. And that's, I'm kind of doing it as I go. I've already got this quarter panel and that one over there in bare metal. And that's really just more bare metal than I like to have. So I'm not gonna open up anymore until we get past the rocker panels. These two rocker panels and our quarter panels rather, I'm sorry. We're not gonna do any more until we get these two quarter panels completely done and primed in, ready to block. Once that happens, I will move on to the, these panels here. Go ahead and get those stripped down, primed in, lined up where they need to be. Remember, we got some gap issues going on here. We're gonna fix those and we'll move on to the hood and the deck lid. But for now, I gotta get out of here, you guys. Uh, go check out my Instagram. There'll be a link in the description as always. Check me out on Facebook, Weird Beard on Facebook. You guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I'm going to get on out of here. I'll see you later.